All right. So I'll, I'll try to be quick with this because I know it's a, it's a quarter after now, but those of you that wanted to hang out, I have a little presentation I can do. We'll take you on a little bit of a journey and, um, and show you the new camera. And it's very, very exciting. So let me see if we can get this rolling here and I'll do my best to be fairly quick. And here we go. Let me share that. So you should see my screen again. So let's take a first look at the, uh, the new OM one. And I have to say this camera is fantastic. You guys, it's, <clears throat> if you can imagine the easiest way I can explain this camera is if you take the, the best, the things that we love the most about the Olympus EM one series, and you put it in a brand new camera, that's, it's like you take it apart and you create a whole new camera that puts that in there, but even faster and smoother and really cool. So let's take a look. I'm going to take you on a little journey here. And it begins right here in the wild on a path and hidden under the canopy and above the worries of the world. And this is where many of us find adventure sense of peace and even purpose. And out there we find a fuller experience of life. And the OM system exists for those who want to live and capture that experience. And for that purpose, we build cameras as companions. And we've always had just one mission. And from our favorite designer, Maitani, who if you don't know the OM, and it, it's basically Maitani is the M and O is, is Olympus. So Olympus Maitani, that's where OM comes from. Um, and one of the, uh, and he designed the Pen F and the OM one, uh, if you didn't know. And here's a quote from him that we love. My most basic motivation was my desire to take good photographs. If I could find a camera that helped me to get the perfect shot, I would buy it. And if I couldn't, I'd make it. And here's some notable cameras from Olympus over the years. The pen, of course, which, which brought, uh, you know, made photography affordable for families. Um, 72, the OM1 really brought that compactness, right? Uh, 86, the OM4 kind of went ahead with that metering and everything. 2004, the E1, really the first, uh, our first digital from the ground up DSLR uh, with four thirds dust reduction. 2012, our EM5, that mirrorless, bringing back that style of the OM. In 2016, the EM1 Mark II, of course, the powerhouse getting better with the autofocus and, you know, bringing birders into the field uh, with, with more autofocus accuracy and, and features like pro capture. So some, some computational uh, coming in full force. And our mission is really to create cameras for people who need what does not yet exist, um, you know, so they can go out there, capture something that's yet to be captured. And big doesn't mean pro, big means bulky. Out in the wild, bulky can mean sacrificing on the experience. And your frame can only be as full as the experience. So with that, everybody, I welcome you to the wild side and introduce the new OM1 from OM System. And let's take a look at it. So it's been 50 years since the original OM1. Uh, prove that a camera can be compact and also have an impact and it's time to do it again. And, you know, really you'll see on this camera where you have the Olympus on the top plate, you have OM system on the side. This is an OM system camera. This is an, I'm proud of that. And I work for OM and it's nice to have to kind of break free from our, our former company a little bit because yes, we have the heritage and yes, we're carrying it on. Um, and it's the same people and we're enjoying it, but it's time for us to have our thing. Right. And I'm really excited about this. So having Olympus on the top plate is really an homage to the OM one. This is, it's being reborn. It's kind of like us, you know, beginning again. And so one thing I will say, and you can see it in this picture, and that's why I'm going to mention it now. Uh, the camera has a lot of rounded features. If you notice, uh, the front looks rounded, um, around the dials, uh, you have a lot of rounded, uh, edges and it's really, it's a design thing, of course, but it's also uh, a function. And you don't really see this with the reviews you've been seeing, because I don't know if anybody really caught on to it, but it really is great because it, you don't get a lot of the dirt and the grime that sticks to a lot of the, the square pieces, the squared off, you know, design of the current EM ones. Um, you know, you really have that rounded feature to keep that dust off and everything. It's pretty cool. Here's what we're looking at with this camera, you know, really it's next generation image quality. We're going to look at some computational photography, some unparalleled speed, absolute reliability, and some full video capabilities. 
And here's the OM1 in a nutshell. And I'm just going to go through a couple of these really quick, but you do have new panels, you know, 5.76 million dot EVF. We have a new sensor. It's backside illuminated quad pixel pattern stacked live MOS sensor. You have a 1053 phase detection cross autofocus points covering hundred percent of your sensor. Currently we're at 70% with 121. So if you can imagine how much more accurate that focus can be. Uh, a new battery, 520 shots uh, in the ratings, you get more. Um, and the new battery is because we needed the juice for this camera. So it is a different battery. It's not backwards compatible with the old system. Uh, there's a new processor, which gives us three times more processing power, 60% more um, with that processor uh, computational power. Um, there's so many things in this, um, and I'll go through some of this stuff, but new, new dust ratings, splash proof ratings, definitely freeze proof. We've upgraded a lot of the computational features. You're even able to do uh, raw, you know, ProRes uh, movie out to Anatomus once they do their updates up to 444 12 bit. So pretty cool stuff. And for those of you that love movies, there is no recording limit, which is great because we've had that for a long time. So let's take a look at image quality. I'm going to go through this pretty quick, you guys, because I know I'm adding it on to another um, presentation. But basically, again, you have that stacked BSI live MOS sensor. We've all been waiting for a new sensor. This one's amazing. Uh, we're getting two stops more noise performance. We're getting another stop at the dyna dynamic range, uh, which is great. I mean, for a four thirds, it's unbelievable. Um, all the power. So the Trupic X, our new processor, is three times what we had in the previous generation and 120 frame per second sensor readout. Super, super fast. And that's what you need for computational. Unshakable. You're looking at about the same. Seven stops with your stabilizer, about what we have now. Um, eight stops with the 12 to 100 or the 300 millimeter or the 150 to 400. Uh, but the rolling, uh, the rolling has been uh, um, corrected a little bit more. So they have updated it, but it is still the same amount of stops. Again, that 20 meg uh, stack BSI sensor is just fantastic. Uh, and it is a little bit different. Your images are a little crisper, a little different. Because again, you know, obviously, when you have a new camera, you're gonna have that new processor. And with this one, we also have the new sensor. So you're really getting a different image. Uh, and it's really high quality. It's really nice. Cross quad pixel autofocus. So if you look at the image on the left, it, you know, we're visual people. So it really helps to see this. But basically, you're looking at phase detection in four directions. So underneath each pixel, so if you look at these colors here on the Bayer uh, pattern, the green, uh, red, and blue, uh, look under the green one on the left there, and you'll see there's, there's basically four pixels underneath each pixel. And those four pixels are dedicated to autofocus. So if you were to use, like on the right here, the picture of the bird, simulated picture, a single autofocus point in the EM1 current cameras, in, inside that focus point, there's four focus points and you see them moving around. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. Again, this, this processor is super fast. So it's three times faster than the Trupic 8. It's, um, it's and 9. Uh, it's, it's three times faster autofocus calculation for the AI detection compared to the EM1X. And that's where it's a little more accurate, like I was saying. 60 times more computational power. Things like your high res and your focus stacking only take five seconds now as opposed to 10 or 12. So it sped everything up double, basically. Um, new AI algorithm for noise reduction uh, based on the sensor characteristic. And that's where we get a lot of the you know, two stops noise reduction or noise difference. So your native sensor res, uh, uh, ISO on the current sensors on the 20 meg sensor is 200 to 6400 and you can boost to 256. This sensor will go 200 to 25.6 and boost to 102,400. So in auto ISO, you can go all the way up to 25.6. And this shot here is at um, 5,000 ISO. Just gives you an example of how clean it is. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, it's really fantastic. Uh, as an example, this is not a great shot, but this is 25,600. And I know it looks like it's bright out, like noon. But again, this was 445 at night in Ohio a month ago. So this is when it starts getting dark. I'm at 1250th of a second, F56, and the camera's going to 256 because it needs that brightness. So this is where I needed low light with my birding. So this is where it worked really well. High dynamic range, we pulled another stop out of it. So pulling out your shadows and everything, you have that. And of course, your stabilization is amazing. There's a new feature in there called the handheld assist. It's pretty cool. You turn it on 
And when you press down your shutter halfway, it brings up this really interesting, like, like square in the center of the, um, in the center of the screen. And you try and line up the white dot in the square with the side of the square. It has white lines and it helps you to kind of like keep the camera stable with your um, image stabilizer. It's pretty cool. And it works really, really well, especially for me. I drink a lot of coffee. So computational photography, if you look at this uh, quick little video here, you know, it shows that dog coming through those posts and it's just amazing how it's tracking. And uh, basically this quad, uh, cross quad pixel autofocus, you know, it really uses this phase detection data and color and contrast information to really create like this detailed depth map. You can see it on the left where it really pulls the subject out from that color and contrast. So it really detects it much more accurately. The high res shot has been improved. So handheld high res, still 50 megapixel and tripod can go to 80. Uh, but basically there's a couple of things. One, they've put it on the record button now. Um, it doesn't mean it has to stay there. You can put it on any function button, but you don't have to go into the menu anymore to get to it or the super control panel. You could just turn it on, turn it off from a button, which is awesome. Nice and quick. And it only takes five seconds in handheld high resolution and no more 16 images. It's 12 images. So it's, it's been, it's become more efficient. It works even better and it's faster. In live ND, if you're a uh, fan of that from the EM one X or the EM one Mark three, which I am, um, it actually goes up to 64 now. So even, even better with the live ND and it works really, really well. Of course, those of you that have used it know that it works amazingly well. Live composite's been updated. So the long exposure modes, typically with live composite, it cuts your stabilization. You have to put it on a tripod. And I've always told customers, Hey, you know, be creative, take it off a tripod, play with it. You can always break the rules. But now we've actually left the, the stabilization on. So you have to turn it off yourself. So you can handhold live composite now with stabilization. It's kind of cool. What you might use that for, we haven't tried yet. I would say sparklers, people writing with, uh, with sparklers or, or lights, um, fireworks, you know, maybe just a, a one or two second or three second exposure. I think to be able to handhold that would be kind of cool. Maybe even a cityscape for a couple of seconds. So it opens up creative possibilities for sure. Focus stacking is still the same at 15 frames in the camera, but it does it in five seconds. It was 10 seconds before. So you're pretty much ready to go once you press the shutter. High speed performance. So now you're looking at 120 frame per second sequential shooting. That's what single autofocus, you know, locked and exposure locked. Boom, 120 frames per second. That's full resolution, raw and JPEG. So pretty cool. The buffer has been updated double. So it's double the buffer we had in the current cameras. And you can also do up to 50 frames per second with continuous autofocus and auto exposure. Now you are limited in that. And I'll show you after what lenses work with that and why. Um, autofocus system, same, uh, same focusing you're seeing now. You can create a custom or use your diamond, your single, your small and all that stuff. I know I'm going fast, but I want to make sure I get you guys out. Uh, this is a pleasure to use the new OLED EVF. We've been waiting for this, all of us for a long time, and we now have it same magnification as the EM one X and it's the same optical design. If you didn't know the EM one X with that LCD has four glass elements in there and it really makes it nice and crisp. The EM one three didn't have that. This one has the same glass elements as the EM one X. So it's designed really nice. And the rear element has an anti fog coating on it. Uh, it's a 5.7 six dot resolution. It's, a, it's an amazing resolution on this. And it's really a pleasure to look through. I, I got to admit, and it's an OLED. So those of us that use polarized sunglasses like myself, it works. Uh, 120 frame per second recycle time, 0 0.005 second uh, delay. So there's barely a delay. And uh, there's also blackout free shooting modes in this camera. So that works really well. So up to 50 frame per second sequential shooting with continuous autofocus. And that also works with pro capture. Um, it's in a mode called SH1 and SH2. You'll see on the bottom here, sequential high one and sequential high two. One is the single autofocus and exposure where it locks the uh, exposure and you get blackout free in SH1 and SH2 is where you get blackout free up to, up to 50 frames uh, with uh, autofocus uh, working. Now, 50 frame per second is limited to certain lenses right now. Uh, it's, I don't know why I would, guess i could guess that it's probably the capability of the autofocus uh, mechanism in the lenses themselves with the camera uh, some of your lenses are faster at autofocus than 
actually the, you know, than others. So being pro lenses and being these specific ones, these work. So both of your uh, 12 to 40s, the current 2.8 and the new version Mark II uh, version, the 40 to 150 2.8, the 300 millimeter F4, 12 to 100 F4, and the 150 to 400 will do 50 frames per second. But don't let that deter you because every other lens will do 25 frames per second, which we're at 18 right now with continuous autofocus on the current EM1. So it's still super fast. I still use 10 mechanical. So have fun with the 25 and going through all them images. <laughs> um, AI detection has been updated. So two times more accurate, three times faster. So the questions I was getting on birds, uh, first of all, we added felines and canines. So dogs and cats. The questions I'm getting on birds, it's much more accurate than the EM1X. And the EM1X is fine. I put it on a custom function. It works really well. There's nothing wrong with it, but it has room for improvement. Well, now you have 1,053 points crosshair autofocus. So you have much more to work with. You have the better depth map to work with. And with this one, you can use single autofocus, continuous autofocus, or tracking. You can use single point, small point, five point, nine point, 20, all the points. So you can be much more accurate on what you're focusing on uh, with birds and where they are. We find that the sweet spot is continuous autofocus without tracking and, um, and then whatever points you wanna use. So I've been using the diamond with this and continuous autofocus without tracking and it's been working really, really good. Um, again, the, the improvements in it, and that's what I just went through where you can use single and, and continuous. Uh, it's much faster and it tracks a lot better. And this is a shot I took with it. And here's another shot I took with it. Same sequence, but you can see where it really grabs uh, really well with the birds and uh, keeps them in focus for sure. And that, of course, also helps with your face detection. It's more advanced. It works in video as well. Uh, and let's talk about reliability really quick. It's now rated at IP53. So we were currently IPX1. And if you ever watched the video we had for the EM1X, it looks similar to the video you're seeing here. Because IPX1 rating is where you drip water on a camera for about 40 minutes. And it is a standard in the industry, um, the IP ratings. And you, there's a website that goes through all the different numbers and everything. But we actually took the EM1X and the EM13 to this level, which is three, basically. We just didn't get it rated at that level. We rated it at one. So this camera, we gave it the rating. It's IP53. Now, what it stands for is the ingress protection rating. Again, it's a standard in the industry. And the five stands for dust protection. So it's got a really good dust protection. And it's got the number three is the spraying water at 60 degrees like that. So the dust and the, and the uh, water protection is amazing. And it's also freeze proof, of course. So now there's also lenses that are already IP53 compatible. So uh, the new 12 to 40, the revamped version is IP53. The 40 to 150 F4 that was just introduced the 8 to 25 F4, 7 to 14 2.8, 12 to 100 F4, 8 millimeter 1.8, 150 to 400, the teleconverters, the 300 F4 and the 40 to 150 2.8. These are all already IP53 rated uh, with the camera. So most of the lenses we all probably have with our EM1 series. The shutter unit's the same as the current EM1 series. Uh, where it's rated at 400,000 actuations. So it's a super durable shutter. And you'll notice on this camera that it only has like one, one mechanical setting, I believe, one or two up to 10 frames a second. Everything else is electronic because the rolling shutter has been just about, you know, blasted and it's gone. Uh, reliable dust reduction, same system. And we've updated that with the EM5 with a coating on the sensor, like I said in, our, in my presentation before. This is cool. So you can use a uh, power bank to charge it and power it. And it does have a new battery. It's 25% more shots. It's a different battery. It does not work with the current battery. That was a rumor that went out. It's a different shape. The cells are a different shape. So nothing's backward compatible. The, the grip's not backward compatible. The battery won't fit in the, in the camera and vice versa. And the charger, it won't fit in the charger. The camera comes with a plug and a USB cable to charge in the camera. You can buy a separate charger uh, separately, um, but you'll charge in the camera. Uh, the nice thing is you can plug in an HDMI and a power bank and still use the camera while you're powering. So if you're shooting video like that, you can do that. That's pretty cool. Dual UHS-2 card slots, and they're staggered. So it's easy to get them in and out and find them in the cold or what have you. Um, 
basically the EM1X had this, the EM13 did not. It had one UHS2 on top and the UHS1 on the bottom. So that's nice to have that speed. And then as far as video really quick, um, we've stepped it up a little bit. So we're finally where we need to be with video. We didn't have a, a few features and we have those now. So you can record 10 bit H265 and there's no time limit. With the battery we currently have, the BLX1, you're getting about 90 minutes on a single battery. Um, you can record as long as you want without overheating. We, we haven't had any issues yet. So um, it will do 4K 60 uh, P, which is really good at a 10 bit 420. Um, and it will do um, it will do 8 bit 422. Um, you have your full HD for high speed movie 100p 120 and 240. You are cropped on the high speed at about 60%. Uh, the cinema 4k 60p is not cropped the 4k it's a it's coming from 5k over sampling. Um, you do have again h264 and 265 supported. And again, there's no recording limit there is a zebra pattern that you can display and there is a red frame you could display during recording just to identify that you're actually recording and nice for us the aperture shutter speed iso and white balance can be set individually and still in image recording another thing i'll say is that um, when you go into video on the dial all of your function buttons become your video buttons when you go out of the video uh, mode on the dial your still shooting um, becomes your function button so that's kind of a nice addition HLG video available for HDR. You do have to have the correct monitors to be able to view that and record it. And um, this is where you'd get to that in the menu. Pretty cool, pretty easy. You can record out to a Ninja Atomus Apple Pro RAW. Uh, they do need to update the Ninja Atomus for this, but you can do up to 60p, 4K, 444, 12-bit. You just need to have them uh, update. And I think that's a couple months out, believe it or not. So. Additional information, I'll do this really quick. The menu's been updated, it's fantastic. It's super easy, everything's color-coded. If you're a current Olympus shooter, I don't think it'll be a problem next to another Olympus. Um, there's a couple of things you gotta get used to. Some things are moved because they're in the right spot now. And you know, you wanna go to the right sometimes when you really wanna hit okay. There's a couple of different things, but it's really cool. For instance, uh, use your front dial to go through the different operations here. Um, use your rear dial or your arrows left and right to get through your different um, your different tabs within each of the of the operations. And then, of course, you can use your up and down arrow to get through and then OK to get into uh, those menus. Also, uh, with that said, the left hand side basically gives you better searchability and the right hand side displays your current settings. So it works really, really well. And then, of course, on top, you have your still image shooting settings, your special techniques. So all of your your computationals in number two, your autofocus for still in video, your video settings, your playback settings, custom settings, and setup. It's very, very simple. And we needed that. You also have when you go into like, say your drive mode as an example, the arrows indicate on the right that you have additional options. And the highlight indicates where you're currently at. So in this case, I'd be at single uh, shot. And it gives you the detailed explanation underneath. So it's like hitting info now, but info now kind of jumbles up what you're looking at in the menu. This gives you the info without being in the way. This is really cool. Let's say, for instance, you're plugged in with an HDMI and you have some grayed out settings. You're like, why is this grayed out? Why can't I use touchscreen settings? Well, if it's grayed out, you just press OK and it tells you that, hey, your HDMI is plugged in. That's why you can't use that. Very, very cool. So that works really well. You have an independent autofocus on button now. So now you have your back button focus uh, lovers have a separate button, which is a great thing. And like I mentioned before in the last class, the OM image share, OI share has become OM image share. And basically we've updated it to where the three apps that we had, the tracker app and all that is all into one now, OI share. So who was asking that? Go to OI share. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're geotagging and all that is in one app. Updated workspace, we talked about that already in the last class and it's fantastic. It's available now. And we did update OM Capture, which is our tethering software. You can actually uh, USB uh, plug in the camera with USB now, the OM1, and power it while you're controlling the camera. So that has been updated. Spandability, there's the grip. So you have your HL10 power, HLD10 power grip takes a battery. You can actually use a battery in there and not in the body and the body will still work. There's no plugs in the grip. You plug in the camera USB and it'll charge in the grip as well. Uh, there's the new battery, BLX1. You can get an extra free one if you order the camera today. 
And uh, there's the charger. So it's a dual charger. Does not come with a plug because you have a plug with the camera that you can plug into the charger. If that makes sense. I know I'm talking fast, you guys. The wireless remote is new. It's an RMWR1. Now, this is wireless only Bluetooth with the OM1. Uh, you do have a plug as well. It'll plug into the OM1, and it will work backwards compatible with the plug, but not wireless, only wireless with the OM1. Um, so I'll do a quick comparison. I got a couple more slides, and I'm done here, you guys. So uh, compared to the EM1X and the EM1 Mark III, um, you got the stacked BSI sensor, so we've updated the sensor. You now have C4K. Uh, 4K uh, 60p video and full HD high speed up to 240 frames per second. You got 1053 cross point phase detection uh, pixels across 100% of the whole sensor now. And your sensitivity, autofocus sensitivity, is now down to minus 8 EV with F at F12 compared to minus 6 EV. You're focusing in the dark. 200 to 102,400 full range of the sensor compared to 25.6. And you have two uh, card slots UHS 2 like the EM1X. You're a little heavier than the EM13 by about 19 grams. It's 599 grams compared to 580. Um, we updated the LCD about 600,000 dots and you have the IP53 ratings as well as the better uh, OLED. Sorry about that. Itching from the uh, microphone here. 5.7 million dots on the OLED compared to the uh, 2.36 dots on the uh, LCD. So much better. 120 frames per second, we pretty much doubled that. And then 50 frames per second with, the, of course, the specific lenses. Uh, but you have 25 frames with everything else. And, um, and then here's our promotion we talked about. So you get a free battery if you order before March 3rd. And you get a three-year extended warranty by just registering before or well, you probably won't register before March 3rd because that's the sales embargo. You won't get the camera till then. But if your receipt has, you know, before March 3rd, you're able to register that. Get the extended warranty on our site. Really quick, I'll go through the lenses. I got about two more slides. Uh, we introduced two new lenses as well. Now the 12 to 40 28 is the same 12 to 40 you love. A lot of people are asking what the difference is. It has OM system on it. That's the difference. No, I'm just kidding. It does, but um, the main difference is that the optical um, in this in this lens was perfectly fine. There's there's nothing wrong with the optics, the way they were laid out, all the lenses, um, the extra low dispersion, all these lenses, they're fine. Um, what we did here is we updated all the zero coatings, so it's got the newest coatings, including the flooring coating um, for cleaning. And what that does is it actually the zero coatings now will reduce a lot of the flare you might have gotten on the original 12 to 40. Um, as well as, you know, backlight situations, things like that. It's going to handle that a little bit better. Also, it has the new IP53 weatherproof rating. The 40 to 150 is exciting. If you look at it, it's 62 millimeters, which means same barrel size as that 12 to 40. So it's fairly small for what it is. You extend it like your 8 to 25 F4. Um, and once you extend it, it stays extended and it's an internal zoom. So pretty cool design. Uh, it finishes out those F4s, 8 to 25, the four. Uh, the 12 to 45 and the 40 to 150 now. So you have that holy trinity of uh, F4s now, which are great for the EM5 series, uh, nice and small, weatherproof. It does not have the clutch and it does not uh, take the teleconverters, uh, but it's a great addition to, if you're looking for something in between that 2.8 or that uh, plastic fantastic uh, kit lens, which is an awesome lens as well. Um, I've been having fun with it. I haven't shot it too much, but here's a shot I took. It's super crisp, colors are good. Um, everything's good on the lens. And here's a couple of shots that are cropped of some birds with it. Uh, it does a great job. It's fast. It's nice. It's lightweight, small. Um, so it's a pleasure to take out. And that's it, you guys. I wanted to give you a really quick synopsis of the new camera. I know I took uh, some time there and uh, probably more time than I needed to, but I, I went pretty fast. Um, but at least it gives you an idea of the new camera and, and what you're looking at there. So, um, so I appreciate everybody, everybody that's still on. And, and thank you very much for, uh, for hanging out there. If you have any questions uh, really quick, I can go through a couple of questions quickly on the OM1 and, um, uh, and that's it. Yeah. You are going to do that. Then I'm going to have to jump off here and start my next one. But um, yeah, it looks like I'm good. It looks like there's, there's really okay. none. So. All right. Well, thank you everybody. And thank good. you, Mike. Yeah, that was thanks, awesome everybody. to be able to uh, add that to our, the end of our presentation. And like I said, um, yeah. we're going to post both of these up both sex we're going to split it out one for the om system and one for our birding class and we'll put those on our youtube channel so you can uh, yeah, go that'll be great. That out later today or tomorrow or even monday if 
at the least. So, um, but I have sure. to jump on another call and we'd love to have you come down to the store and check out the deals. Absolutely. Great Olympus deals going right now and deals on all kinds of stuff. And so, yeah, come on down and uh, check it out. So check thank them you, out, you guys, check out the website. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Heather. And have a great right. day and have a great day, everybody. Right. I appreciate thank it. You, Mike. Thank you, Heather. Bye. I'll see you.